What's up, guys? Welcome to the Drunken Ship Podcast. I'm your host, and only <laughs> host for today, actually, is me, Tay Infinite. Um, I usually record Thursdays, um, but I have a program called Voice Meter Banana. That's what I usually use so I can separate audio, but currently I'm going to record um, the state of play and also the podcast, obviously. All the settings was gone. So... Uh, this morning, I woke up at 3 o'clock this morning. It's actually 8.14 a.m. right now. Um, yep, sorry, read text message. I'm actually recording this the day this podcast will be <laughs> posted. So today, since I'm off work, I'll be talking to you guys by myself because I'm assuming everyone's at work. So I'm seeking to last at least 20 or 30 minutes. I think I can manage it. I'm just going to ramble. For you to listen to, clearly I didn't make my bid yet. Obviously, for the bid, I, I, I was busy. Um, I woke up at three, just ate breakfast like an hour ago. So, just mess around. I got this from Walmart for like ten dollars. I think it's warm. I want a bigger one though, a way bigger one. So yeah, what can we talk about to keep you? Boys and girls entertained. No. Um this day sucked. To be honest with you. I went to the gym though the first time like in a week. It's nice. I actually did pretty well eating garbage lately, but when I got on the treadmill, my thirty minutes my casual thirty minute run. Did a really good job. Breathing was great. That's gone. It was nice. Um yeah. You know I posted on Twitter uh, yesterday, uh, I went from, I uh, had to go to Walmart after I left the gym, and um, I'm minding my own business, this lady, uh, lady and her caretaker, which is a daughter, stopped me <laughs> and asked for them to pay for their uh, groceries, because the lady is very diabetic, um, has severe anxiety, like, Constantly shaking like crazy. And um, like 2.30 something, I paid for the grocery. I did it for him. The lady felt so bad asking me. I couldn't resist. I feel like it was the right thing to do. You know, it kind of made me angry. Because like, why we pay for these all these expensive medical beer? Which I get, you got to pay the doctors. But same, you leave some of these people broke. I don't, I just, I don't know. Who knows? I did. It felt like the right thing to do. I hope they're fine with that. I hope they're going good right now. But yeah, there's that. Some of that. Um, yeah. Uh, there's an, apparently, there's a Pokemon. Wait. What? Sorry. I'm on <laughs> YouTube. Apparently, there's a Pokemon Direct today. I don't know when and it will happen. Let me Google that. Pokemon fans out there. Let's see here. No, I, I kind of been. It's a Pokemon presentation. Yeah, the 26th of today. Isn't today something else? Is February 26th a special day? No idea. But there's a Pokemon event. A lot of fans are hoping uh Gen 4, I think it's the Shino and I think that was it called. With, so yeah, I, 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 that's when I stopped playing Pokemon, when they introduced Diamond, it's Diamond Pearl Pokemon. That's when I stopped giving the crap about Pokemon. I just, I don't know, I started losing um, interest. Kind of got back into it back in high school. That uh, junior year, junior, senior year, around 2013, 14, I started getting back into Pokemon. I started playing Fire Red again, which is like my favorite Pokemon game of all time. I admittedly called myself a Gen 1-er. I just prefer Gen 1. Gen 1 to 3 is my alley of Pokemon. I can at least understand what's happening. Because I, I, I got Pokemon uh, Black 2 and White 2 2012. Is that when it came out? 2013. I don't know. I got it at Christmas. I got both copies for Christmas. Both Black 2 and White 2. And uh, made a boy and a girl on each free version. And when I played, I felt lost, ironically. Like, I 
Is that, does it make any sense? Like, I just felt lost as a Pokemon fan. Like, I don't know who these guys are. I don't know what land I'm traveling. I'm just playing this game. But the game was fun. Uh, the Pokemon there was, uh, was it appealing to me. I do like the grass type I choose. I think his name was Snivy, Snivy. The first time I'm using, well, the well, third time I'm using grass type. First was Bulbasaur. But my real first Pokemon was Charmander. But when I did replayed Fire Red, I choose Bulbasaur. But I choose that Snivy guy. Man, not bad. I think it's third form. He's like a snake or something. Wasn't that great? There's also, which I may be recording today. I'm trying to figure it out. It's, um, IGN is doing a panel for a lot of Warner Brothers projects. So, they may be, sh I think they're showing some Godzilla versus Kong. So, I think director Adam Wingard is coming to IGN to, uh, talk about it. So, I may do a react to that, which should be fun. I'm excited for this movie, dude. This movie looks awesome. Real awesome. No, <laughs> I'm one of the people that actually read spoilers of the movie. And it's lining up pretty, pretty well, actually. I just hope Godzilla wins. The leaker didn't specifically say who wins. But so he does a, even the director, like a year or two ago, said that there's going to be a definitive winner of the movie, which I think is going to be Godzilla. You know, I pee at work. <laughs> Bored thinking in my head, and um, I uh, I was just trying to figure out this plot from the trailers, you know. And I was thinking, like, because the first two films established that Godzilla is king or god of titans, whatever you want to call it, he's the, the, the like the hierarchy, he's the top, and that's canon to the monster story. Um, so I think they will do something like Godzilla will beat Kong and he'd probably maybe end up quote unquote killing him until Mecha Godzilla appears and Kong decides to like hey I can help Godzilla out defeat the real enemy sorry if I spoil something by the way <laughs> Mecha Godzilla yeah he's the final villain sorry for the spoilers but yeah Mecha Godzilla's in the movie and the final true villain um yeah, I, I think it's going to end with Godzilla showing him, like, respect to uh, Kong. Allow him to coexist. But I can't get too much into it because it's, it's a lot of spoiler territory. But it could be fake, but I don't want to mention it just to ruin something for you, you know? I um, wonder how. Uh, yeah, I just say that talk because we actually talk about Godzilla versus Kong next week. But. Kaijus and stuff in general next week, so keep that talk to me. Made a play yesterday. It was, uh, we did react to it like a bit earlier. It was okay. Um, no, I was, I was tweeting out after the, after we watched the state of a good 30 minutes, 25 30 minutes, stuff we saw. These past couple of months for 2021, which I was expecting, like, hey, games we got announced already, we just get some little updates for them, gameplay at least, you know, a little trailer or something. And that's what we got, which, yeah, makes sense. Um, it's just the fact that I was more disappointed from the fact that, like, I don't like when Sony and Nintendo, maybe Xbox, um, does these, these direct things and, like, <laughs> Show so that it could have been an article or a PlayStation blog post. You see what I'm saying? Like I could have read about this. It's been taking 30 minutes of my time away. I could have been doing something else. I could have read this later tonight. I don't know. I guess they want if tune in more. I don't, I don't know. That's annoying. That's that's my biggest problem with the pod, uh, the state of play. I didn't hate the state of play. I just I knew it was coming. It just it was just waste resources. You could have wrote that as an article, a blog post, or someone will tweeted it and. All of us will read it because if you're interested in the game, we will read it, you know? I don't know what. Yeah, I broke the path list. Cyber Shadow. I haven't touched it much, though. I've been busy with work, but I want to get on into it. 
Let me get into that. You know, I was looking down. And I read this last night. What's with my mic? I read this last night. You can see that? Yeah. Superman World of War. Worlds of War. I can keep getting mixed up. Issue number two. Future state stuff. Things after DC's death metal. It's like the a possible future of DC. Which I when I when I first discovered this stuff, like what the heck is the point of this? Like Elsewhere stories or I don't know. I'm just reading Superman titles because it's only DC here to I care about nowadays. Dude, speaking of Superman, by the way. Uh February twenty third. Superman Lois Superman and Lois, that's the show it's called. Uh that released. You know, I did a trailer reaction to it a month ago, I think. A month or two ago. And dude, this show, I'm gonna be honest with you, this show's awesome. So far at least. I was uh I understand people concerned about oh it's a CW show, which I was one of those people. I do not care about CW shows anymore, but since it was Superman, I'm biased. But when I walked it when I watched this show, like coming into the show, like I was like thinking like either it, either like it or not like it. That was my expectations for the show. And uh It, it, sh- it shocked me how well it was. It was very unusual for your typical CW show. Um, the cinematography. <laughs> they got this weird filter on it, too. The CGI is better. Uh, yeah. It, it, what's this guy's name? Tyler? I don't know the actor's name. Tyler something. He, he appeared as Supergirl as Superman. This is that version of Superman show. Now, uh, I didn't watch Crisis. I watched, like, it's and stuff on clips, but I understand what the crisis is and what it did. It rebooted the CW universe. And clearly this show does that. Like he, um, I think Clark and Lois, well, they had children in the original. Uh, did they have children pre-crisis on CW? I don't know. Permit me to comment. But now those, those siblings are older now. Uh, Jonathan and Jordan Kent. Jordan is a new character. Jonathan, I know. But you guys know who John is. I was really shocked to see two children for Superman, Clark, or whatever. But it actually pays off. Um, no, I'm going to go. Okay. I'm at 13 minutes in. Spoilers. I'm going to go spoilers with this show, Superman and Lois. But yeah. Um, so yeah, Jordan uh, has powers. Uh, there's a little fight scene. He goes to his. Jordan goes to this party with his girl, Lana Lang's daughter. I don't care this name. She told him to go to this party with him, hang out. And <laughs> he kissed Lana Lang's daughter, and her boyfriend comes out and just pushes or punches. I can't remember. Jordan. And Jonathan comes and says, Hey, you mess with my brother, you mess with me. So they start beefing up and fighting. And next thing you know, John, Jordan gets stressed out and shoots heat vision. Like, wow, that was a. Cool moment because we respecting because uh john kent was the one we all thought who had powers even uh, clark and lois thought he had powers because in the like around the, around the episode they were mentioning like um he's like a jockey kid he's a cool kid active young you know the typical young active kid um and i guess i guess kind of popular in school i'm not sure they don't really go into that but he plays football, and he was in um, the only <laughs> kid that actually managed to get to such a high level of football of school. I don't know that mess or whatever it's called. And I was wondering, like, does he have powers? Like, is he doing it because he have powers? And that's what Lois and Clark kind of speculated. The whole entire time, it was uh, Jordan who had the power. But I do think um, John Kent would get superpowers probably midway or at the end of the season, Super Sons, probably going to be a thing. A reference to Damian Wayne John Kent's storyline. I mean, nothing the same, but it's going to be something. Super Sons, you know. But yeah, that was, that was cool. Um, Tyler, I, dude, I like him as Clark. I'm still iffy. Um, and stick with me, this. Uh, he doesn't really look like Clark Kent. Did that make any sense? But he acts like Clark Kent really well. 
I'm not used to that saying him as Superman or Clark Kent. It just it, he doesn't the actor doesn't speak Clark Kent to me in terms of appearance, but as the acting, yeah, he, he fantastic. Um, he's gotta get used to his face. It's so weird. Like that's how yeah, that's just so funny. And hear me out. I gotta talk about it every time it's Superman. It comes up somehow, but uh, Henry Cavill Superman. I think he looks like Clark Kent. Or uh, if I read a comic book and Henry Cavill, I can see the similarities. He looks like Clark, looks like Superman, <laughs> but his Superman was not my Superman. Either. So it's like that. Uh, but yeah, I'm, 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 it was a it was a good show. Uh, it um, it's just nice to have a good, in my personal opinion, uh, a good Superman show to look forward to. You know, that's like. <laughs> The Snyder stuff and DC, how DC is handling Superman, and how Warner Brothers is freaking handling Superman like they don't know what to do. Like, come on. I remember they made an article, but it was about a year and a half ago or something like they don't know what to do with Superman or how he's relevant or whatever. And it's like you look outside your window, look at the news, clearly there's a Superman story right there. I mean, like at the time you had like President Trump or what we're doing right now, the coronavirus. How would Superman react to that? You know? And it's like I'm just a just some dude <laughs> does a podcast that reads Superman stories. I can think of a story like that, but a Warner Brothers executive can't think of a story for Superman. It's like, come on, I don't want to get what's going on over there with that character. They can write deep, the moral, they can write freaking Batman stories, no problem, but they can't write a Superman story. It's so simple. The material is right there in your face. Use it. And um, and that's that's real world issues, which Lois and Clark trolling back here. <laughs> Superman and Lois does that too as well. Like uh, Clark loses his job and he's dealing with family, something relatable to some people, especially nowadays. And relate to that, how to handle things. And I mean, Clark relatable to some people who didn't think relatable, which I already thought he was relatable in a sense, but now yeah, it's more easier for those people to see that. It's nice to see. Uh, yeah, again, it's just nice to see um, a good live action Superman show. Refreshing. Like, I don't think we need to. I don't know. Better rely on movies. And for me personally, just I don't really watch a lot of te- television, so something for me to look forward to every week now. Alongside One Division, which finally watch episode. As soon as I woke up, I woke up literally at three o'clock this morning, and I was like, "No, I just stay up and watch One Division." Twitter will spoil you with some stuff. And the WandaVision's fantastic. <laughs> I'm just rambling here. Uh no, is awesome. Um, like literally every week I'm literally there hasn't been an episode I've been generally disappointed with WandaVision. Which is a great thing. And it's so funny. Um talk about that later though, but um Yeah, like it's How does Marvel do that? <laughs> Keep me engaged, you know. Like, the, 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 the common critique of this show is like it's so sm- it's so short. I mean, yeah, it's a TV show, but how Marvel does it is like a good twenty twenty five minutes of content, then six minutes <laughs> of credits, and it's like it's so good. But when you get engaged, is it's over. Oh, it's like Sonic Forces. So once you get into slightly entertained, it ends. You know, and let's let this episode was really um crazy, dude. Um, goes deep into Wanda's like psychosis. How he's a messed up character. She's a tragic character. And I feel bad for her. She lost Vision. She lost her brother. Her family. Which this episode, spoiler alert, shows that. And it's like oh, Jesus Christ. So you feel for her in this episode. It's her and Athaga's are meddling with like showing her different time periods of her life and from as a kid to being an Avenger. Like all do that. It's really messed up. And um you know, like I know Elizabeth Olsen. I think Elizabeth Olsen and um uh Visions actor, I think they Paul something his name. They uh They've been teasing an actor coming to the One Division show, which I wish they shouldn't never did. 
because fans are going to <laughs> speculate like crazy. It was Magneto or it's a Charles or it's Wolverine or they always keep going some mutant out there. Which it could be anybody. I, I can't argue, though, but I don't think it's going to be any other. It could be Magneto. Who knows? Who knows? Next week is the last episode of WandaVision. But I think it's going to be Doctor Strange. I don't know why Paul Bentley said it's someone he never met. I'm not sure what he was going with for there. Elizabeth Olsen says it's like a Luke Skywalker <laughs> type or ordeal from the Mandalorian. Remember that? How Mandalorian after a period was an oh my god, holy shit moment. I don't think we're going to get that WandaVision. I think they kind of overhyped it. I wish they didn't say that. Because I think fans' like expectations are going to be super high. I'm like, ah, God, why did she say that? I know she's excited, but God, you should never said that because now people are going to think that people are looking for that scene in particular and ignore what the show is giving you right now. And, and as soon as they don't get that moment, this entire show is trash to them, which I'm afraid is going to happen, sadly. Because this is a fantastic show. I was, uh, when they announced it, I was like, sure, WandaVision, okay. We based off that Tom King comic, slightly similar to that comic, I guess. But it wasn't my most anticipated MCU show, uh, Falcon Winter Soldier was. And I'm actually sitting down watching it like, wow, this is awesome. Um, really good. Probably one of the best MCU material out there. It actually gives uh, Wanda, and I guess Vision, more character. Like, this episode was fantastic in terms of Wanda's character. Like, we see more going on with her life. And when you, I, like I said, like, when you watch MCU movies, it's cool to, like, watch the newest movie that tells you something and like what it like the reference or something from the past movies so when you go back and watch those movies again it's like oh understand what they meant there understand why they did that or something and that happened to wanda today with so like you watch age of ultron and you see how to introduce you like oh my god that's what wanda went through like oh it's so good i love that i love that about mcu i think mcu is becoming something more like a star wars now even though marvel existed first I'm talking about in terms of, I should be specific, like, in terms of the movies, uh, Marvel was coming, like, this Star Wars kind of universe where a lot of things can be connected, like, grander scheme, you know? The comics are to do that, but it's nice to see that in a TV show, a movie, franchise. Yeah, it's, it's just nice to see that. So I can't wait. But I was saying, like, the... I think the character is going to be Doctor Strange. I've been saying this for weeks now. Uh, I think most people knew that themselves. It's going to be freaking Doctor Strange because she won the visions in. Uh, what did I say? I'm sorry, no. Doctor Wanda's in Doctor Strange too. This Doctor Strange, Wonder of Madness. So I think he's going to make a cameo in this movie, in the TV show, and he's you know, like, "Hey, come with me. I can teach you magic." chaos magic and help her there be a little teacher or mentor from there um yeah that's pretty obvious a lot of people are speculating that one would maybe be a villain in um uh, my daughter strange too because she's creating different realities and all that stuff which i could see why they said that no it probably destroys one character i think it's gonna be nightmare next movie for daughter strange too that's the only that's one of the few villains i know about strange Nightmare. I can see him coming. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, you guys should watch WandaVision. Fantastic show. But three weeks after that, no, two weeks after next week, um, we have Falcon and Winter Soldier, which that was my most anticipated um MCU TV show, which oh my god, I can't wait for that. The chemistry between Anthony Mackey and uh, Sebastian Stan is gonna be spot on. Hey, look, look at their past interviews, like prior to all this MCU show stuff. You can tell they're like BFs or something. They're like friends in real life or something. So to see that in action film, that's going to be awesome. I, I can't wait for that show. And, and, and I remember reading something or listening to someone else, and they made a good point how this is the most. Falcon and Soldier is the most traditional Marvel content. It's probably why it's speaking to me more. What's funny, I got a Marvel show. For you video watchers out there. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, that's probably most traditional Marvel MCU shows coming out as of right now, which I, I cannot fucking wait. 
I remember like shedding a tear um, uh, when Cap gave Sam the freaking shield. Oh my god, that was a moment for me. Yeah, because this is like a lot of speculation over the years, like teasing this either for Bucky or Sam, and he gave it to Sam. I'm like, oh my god, yes, give it. Like that's awesome. Like I just like, dude, we're in. The MCU is crazy, man. Like, I know. I remember at the end game, people was like, we kind of don't care about MCU no more. The story's done. Like you guys haven't seen nothing yet. The MCU just started. I think Kevin Feige said the same thing. Like, the MCU just started, guys. You're, you're in for a treat. And I'm, we're saying that right now. Like, the multiverse stuff was going on. Shang Chi, The Eternals, which I can't wait for, which I'm in a minority with that. Doctor Strange 2, Spider Man 3. Like, freaking Moon Knight. <laughs> this kind of TV show, right? It was a, yeah, TV show he's getting. Miss Marvel, one of my favorite female Marvel characters. I can't wait for her. Uh, she Hulk, which I haven't seen her in years. Read her in years, so yeah, dude, it's exciting, dude. Like, I just as a comic book fan and a Marvel fan, it's awesome to see these characters, dude. I cannot wait. It's, it's, it's like it's more stuff to do now, and you know, ever since they, they announced, like, it's funny because like Marvel is even though they kind of did before, but it's then they truly are embracing like their comic book brand and they're throwing that stuff into movies, and people are eating up. I'm one of those people. They can throw the most crazy stuff and people eat it up, and I would same. Because it's like it's wacky. We're here for an enjoyment. And Marvel knows that. And I'm here for it, dude. Um, but yeah, this is gonna be I'm gonna end the podcast here. I almost made it to 20. Well, I almost made it to 30 minutes. I'm at 27. So yeah, um, I cut it here. It's just a little short video to give you guys something, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so if you like this podcast episode, you can follow me at twitter.com slash tinfinite underscore slash tinfinite. Sorry, it's in the link in the description. All the links are in the description. But yeah, this is just a short little podcast because I felt bad after what happened last night with this freaking computer setup. <laughs> so I, I took it off. Just increased my audio quality. Hope it's good, guys. But yeah. Um, this episode, thanks. It means a lot. Appreciate that, guys. It's coming up today. So make sure you follow the boys, our original gang. Their links are below. All their Twitters, their Twitches, you know, <laughs> the social medias in the description below. But okay, thanks, guys. Tune in next week for the next episode. It really means a lot. Take care. Whoa.